have the logical thinking and the emotional thinking. The logic is rational based on solid data, outcomes, consequences. Unlike the emotional thinking, which is irrational, driven by our desires and craving. Now, Mark Manson puts this in a beautiful picture in his book. And I would like to put this picture inside your head. Now let's say that you are God. That's you. This world is your life. Decisions that you make are turns that you take left and right. You have the emotional brain and the logical brain. A driver and a passenger. And where do you hands up if you take the logical brain the one driving this car. Okay, quite a lot. I'm sorry to break it to you, but it's not. It's the emotional brain responsible for the decision that we take. Let me tell you what. Remember our friends in it? Well, he was responsible for destroying that. Basically, everyone who underwent frontal lobotomy. I mean, frontal lobotomy was a success. It did cure all mental disorders, but people started noticing something weird about everyone who underwent frontal lobotomy. They realized that these patients lost the ability to make decisions. I'm not talking about major life decisions, but smaller decisions, like what to eat, the Soviet Union was the first country to ban frontal lobotomy in 1950, and the rest of the world followed. Think about it. If it was the logical brain in charge of making decisions in our life, why make a wrong decision? That you knew very well it was wrong, but you still did it. The logical brain is just a passenger on this trip of life. It does try to convince the emotional brain to make the right decision. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Now the issue is that the emotional brain is wild. It's chaotic. It does what feels good, but it's not necessarily good. Bad decision. 
Now, don't try to challenge your emotional brain with your logical brain. We are never lose. Why? It's the emotional brain behind the steering wheel. Not only you are going to lose, but eventually, your body is going to reach a point of defeat where it starts to justify Great. How? Let me give you an example. Let's say you are trying to lose some weight. You are on a diet. You, your emotional brain, decides to have an ice cream. But then your body comes bring. Oh, you had a long day. You deserve that. Look, a little bit more extreme than just gaining a few pounds. Some people, the logical brain, which actions, the wise actions of their emotional brain, by saying things like, you do hear such awful comments in our communities. Now, so what's the solution? I mean, I wish I could just could switch seats. That would solve the whole thing. But it does not work that way. So once again, what's the solution? I'm here today to help you with that. When I was seven years old, I went to my parents to attend this It was so crowded, and somehow I got. And everyone there. I mean, I need Every time I go up to someone and ask about my parents, all I hear is, Shepan, Shepan, Shepan. To this day, I don't even know what Shepan means. If, if anyone speaks Chinese here, I have a lot of questions on this set up. And then I just found myself on the floor crying, not knowing where my parents are. I don't know who that is. I couldn't find pictures from that day, so I just Googled boy crying on the floor. I was found two hours later. Moral of the story. You need to speak in a language that the listener understands. So is the case with the emotional brain. If you want your emotional brain to understand you, you need to understand, you need to address it in a language that it speaks, which is emotion. Your emotional world does not speak logic, does not speak sense. I mean, all day long trying to remind your emotional brain how many calories that the ice cream has, but it's still, your emotional brain is going to have the ice cream. You'll try to convince your emotional brain that you need to study, but it's still, it's going to go on two hours from TikTok. Let me elaborate. What do I mean by speaking emotion to your emotional brain? Next time you're on a diet, instead of trying to show in your emotional brain how many calories does the ice cream have, remind your emotional brain with something like, hey, how good does it feel? to be in that summer body. Next time you try to study, you can't study. Instead of being like, I don't study, I'm gonna get an F. If I study, I'm gonna get an A. Hmm. Your emotional brain knows that. Everybody knows that. But still, it's gonna go to pick up. Try doing something like, hey, emotional brain. How would you, when I fail, I know my friends pass. Maybe that way, your emotional brain is going to push you to take the right decision and actually go to the library. So, to conclude my speech, I'd like to tell you that you need to understand that it's the emotional brain in charge of making decisions in our life. You need to understand that the emotional brain speaks emotion does not speak sense. Lastly, bad decisions 
is an issue of lack, self-communication, not self-control. Thank you.